Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Most high, 
The Lord be with you. And with Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, who knowest us to be set in the midst of so many and great dangers, that by reason of the frailty of our nature, we cannot always stand upright. Grant to us such strength and protection as may support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. The Old Testament lesson appointed for reading on the fourth Sunday following the Epiphany is recorded for us in the prophecy given through St. Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 1 through 3. Isaiah prophesied, Now thus saith the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Here ends the lesson. We read responsively Psalm 97 as printed in the bulletin. The Lord reigns, let the earth rejoice. Let the Clouds and darkness surrounded him. A fire goes before him. And burns up his enemies round about His lightnings light the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord. The heavens declare his righteousness, and all the people see his glory. Let all be put to shame who serve carved images, who boast of idols. Worship him, calling gods. Zion hears and is glad. And the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgment is the Lord. For you, Lord, are most high above all the earth. You are exalted above the You who love the Lord, Hate evil. He preserves the souls of his saints. He delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. Light is sown for the righteous, and gladness for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. The Holy Epistle appointed for this day is recorded for us in St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 13, verses 8 through 10. Brethren, owe no one anything except to love one another, for he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, all are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Here ends the Holy Epistle. The heathen shall fear the name of the Lord, and all the kings of the earth thy glory. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, the Lord reigneth. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of isles be glad thereof. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Please arise for the reading of the Holy Gospel recorded for us in the Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 8, beginning at the 23rd verse. At that time, when Jesus got into a boat, his disciples followed him, and suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea, so that the boat was covered with the waves. But he was asleep. Then his disciples came to him and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. But he said to them, Why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And the men marveled, saying, Who can this be, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Here ends the Holy Gospel.
dear fellow redeemed, by the blood of the spotless Lamb of God, who indeed is with us. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours in abundance from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The words on which we meditate this morning are the words of the Old Testament lesson. Hear them again in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 3. Thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You probably didn't notice this, but the intro at and gradual for this Sunday is the same as that for last Sunday, which might suggest to you that because the number of Sundays in Epiphany varies, and when you get to four and five, and then finally uh, still have a sixth one this year, five including Transfiguration, um, because they didn't occur every year that toward the end here, this is sort of kind of thrown in on the one hand, maybe. And on the other hand, there is a specific collect appointed for the day, and we're going to look at that again in a moment. This Sunday, I suppose, kind of has the flavor of an end time Sunday. And when I, you know, pull out those quickly provided materials for service planning that you know, have been honed over the years, and I look in the suggestions for hymns, many of them are end times sort of hymns. Well, I looked at that and I thought, it is epiphany. It is a time of rejoicing. We rejoice that Christ reveals his power to us and is with us. Let's save the end times thought and the end times hymns for the end times. And let's truly celebrate and rejoice in the reality that Christ is among us. He is and indeed ever shall be. Amen. Amen. The Collect for today. Hear these words of the Collect that we pre which we prayed. Uh, at least according to our renewed Christian person, we prayed it in deep sincerity and longing. Almighty God, who knowest us to be set in the midst of so many and great dangers that by reason of the frailty of our nature, we cannot always stand upright. Grant to us such strength and protection as may support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptation through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, etc. Um, problem is, we maybe don't think we're in the midst of great dangers. So the gospel account, you are sitting today in the nave of the church because the Christian church from way back, day one as they say, thought of the church as a boat. And this account of Jesus' ministry and his miracles recorded in the gospel for us. Um, the church understands that there's a spiritual thought there. There are all kinds of things that the evangelists could have recorded for us. And they recorded the calming of the storm, the apostles in the boat, crying out to Jesus, who, though God neither slumbers nor sleep, Jesus, exhausted from his ministry, is sleeping. And according to this account that you heard this morning, the waves were over the boat. They're being swamped. They fear, and they go to Jesus. Save us! We're perishing here. Oh, you 
of little faith. And please don't understand Jesus as saying, what is wrong with you people? You have such little faith. But let's understand it this way. You have a little faith. Calm down. I'll take care of it. You have a little faith. Hear those words as being spoken to you. You have a little faith, but boy, oh boy, maybe you better wake up. Maybe you better wake up. If you are in this world and you do not understand the Christian church to have the waves of culture, the waves of those who claim to have knowledge, those scientists, those great political leaders who see all the dangers around and they're going to fix it by swamping the holy Christian church. If you do not recognize that the world around you, around you sees you and the holy Christian church as the problem, if you don't see it, you need to wake up. Hear the words of our text again. Thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flames scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in your place. What in the world is he talking about? He appears to be referring to the prophecy of Ezekiel. Ezekiel and Isaiah were contemporaries. They weren't exactly birth and death, preaching and prophesying at the very same moments, but they overlapped each other very well. And in Ezekiel, yeah, 29, 30, 33, you know, in that area, if you go and read there. And it's, it's all, it's not just one little passage. It's a pretty extensive account if you're going to take the fullness of it. Um, God prophesies and talks about how Nebuchadnezzar besieged Tyre, and he and his army gained nothing from it. And so God said, I'm going to give him payment of Egypt. The thought is, he's going to plunder Egypt rather than you. Now we know what finally came about, that even Jerusalem was conquered and carried away. But this reference to that, that I gave others in your place, and God is not so merciful that he didn't restore Egypt. He, he did. He prophesied he would do it. Forty years, they're going to be out of their land. Then I will return them, but they will never be great again. But they will know that I am the Lord. God is always calling everyone to know that he is the Lord, that he is merciful and gracious, that he alone saves. And God said that I am doing this, he said in Ezekiel's prophecy. I am doing this so that my people, who in their unbelief, in their lack of trust in me, in their lack of turning away from their sins, and I think that's what God is getting at in this prophecy given through Isaiah. I want you to fear for your sins, but don't fear the people around you. When you see it, when you feel like you are drowning because all of the stuff around you is contrary to your faith, know that not only can I save you, but I will. But when you don't trust in me, I'm going to knock the props out from under you so that you will stumble and you will know that your salvation does not come from anywhere but from me. And so in that prophecy given in Ezekiel, God said, I am going to give Egypt to Nebuchadnezzar and his army because you, Israel, looked to them for support rather than to me. And I am going to show you that that's not where your help lies. That's not where you find salvation. And when you see that happen, 
then you will know that I am the Lord. And that echoing, that you will know that I am the Lord, that they will know that I am the Lord. God would here today have you know that he is the Lord. And part of that is that you would wake up. Wake up. First, understand that at the best, your faith is truly a little faith. But don't forget what God says about that little faith. If you have faith like a mustard seed, you can and you will do absolutely profound things. When, when you're floating along in the boat of the church and you don't feel like the waves are over the ship, you need to wake up. Look at yourself. Look at what God calls you to do. We prayed in the collect that because of our sins and frailties and weakness, and God, you know this, we are not always able to stand upright. Think of that gospel lesson. How the apostles in a boat where the waves are over the boat, do you think they were able to stand upright? Do you think they came to Jesus sleeping in that boat, standing up and saying, Lord, we're in danger here. They were probably crawling on their hands and knees. We are not able to stand upright. Own it for yourself. Understand the culture in which you live, and how badly it attacks you and your mother, the church, the boat in which you ride. Understand that your own sin is dragging you down under the waves, that you can so quickly be out of the boat. Take it seriously, because there is no salvation out there. There are those who look at the ones who end up in hell, and they, they judge it as well as they are able in this way. That those who end up in hell receive from God exactly what they want of him, to be away from him. And so God says, fine, if, if you really, really want to be away from me, you'll be away from me. If that's what you really want, then yes, you will be away from me. Do you want to be away from God? The one who out of concern for you became a human being to save you, to save you from destruction, to save you from eternal suffering. Would you not rather have him rule over you? The one, the one who has such power such glory that he can command wind and waves and it grows calm. The one who said, let there be, and there was. The one who created you. Oh, Jacob. And formed you. Oh, Israel. Jacob was chosen by God from the womb to be in the line of the Savior. That isn't to say that he was saved and his brother Esau was damned. Um, you're reading the text carefully. It appears that his brother died in the faith. But he was not chosen. He was rejected from the line of the Savior. But Jacob, whose name means heel grabber, whose brother said of him, isn't he rightly named leg puller? Because he has deceived me these two times. The one who was created by God as Jacob, who asked his father for a blessing. And when his father asked him his name, true to his name, he lied and said that he was Esau and received a blessing on the basis of a lie. Later on, when he was returning to his father's household, about to face his brother, from whom he ran because his brother wanted to kill him, kind of understandable, not excusable, but understandable, because he deceived him and stole from him, not once, but twice. Christ attacked him, wrestled with him all night long. And when it was time to go, when morning was breaking, and Christ was saying, OK, this has been fun, but time to go, Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. He heard 
from his Lord's mouth. What is your name? And on the basis of honesty, I'm the heel grabber, the usurper, the liar. He received a blessing. You see, he had been formed by God. As he ran away from his brother in fear, having received a blessing on the basis of a lie, God formed him in his banishment. And when he was returning, having been formed, he was called by name Israel, strength with God. You will not any longer be known as the leg puller, the deceiver, but you will be known as strength by God, strength with God. I have called you by name. I created you and I formed you. So you too were created by God. In the waters of baptism, you were created as a child of God. You were called by God's name. You received a blessing on the basis of a lie. What? You were called holy when you were born of unholy creatures. And throughout your life now, God has been forming you. And even today, you received a blessing on the basis of the truth. I am by nature sinful and unclean. But I flee to your mercy in my Savior Jesus. And you receive the blessing because God has formed you. And on the basis of the truth, I am sinful and unclean. You receive the blessing. I forgive you. I forgive you all of your sins. So know this, the waves do roar around us. They would swamp us. Every interaction we seem to have in our daily lives would seek to pull us down and drown us. Yet God is faithful. God is faithful. He will not let us be lost. His church, even to this day, stands among us. A testimony to us that Jesus is absolutely faithful to his word. The council, all the council of hell, the gates of hell itself, shall not prevail against my church. It will always be. And so when we wonder sometimes, look around you. The church is here. Jesus is faithful to his word. When we wake up and we see the dangers to the church and the dangers to ourselves, we recognize we have a little faith. And we turn again to our Savior, who is God of God and Lords of the Lord. He is so powerful, so exalted, so glorious, that even nature itself obeys him. He is powerful to save. And when we are honest about who and what we are, we receive the blessing on top of the blessing. We are forgiven of our sins. And he calls to us. And he welcomes us. And he gives himself to us. This is truly the glory of God that he would become man to save mankind. Amen. Please arise for the blessing. And now the peace of God, which goes beyond all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.
Let us arise and pray as we bring our prayers before the Lord this morning. We continue to remember our sister Peggy in our prayers and also uh, Yulia's father, Vecheslav, is uh, approaching the time of his departure from this life. We remember him in our prayers as well and the rest of the family. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who art worthy to be had in reverence by all the children of men, we give thee most humble and hearty thanks for the innumerable blessings, both temporal and spiritual, which without any merit or worthiness on our part thou hast bestowed upon us. We praise thee, especially that thou hast preserved unto us in their purity thy saving word and the sacred ordinances of thy house. And we beseech thee, O Lord, to preserve and extend thy kingdom of grace, and to grant unto thy holy church throughout the world purity of doctrine and faithful pastors who shall preach thy word with power and help all who hear rightly to understand and truly to believe it. Send forth laborers into thy harvest and open the door of faith unto all the heathen and unto the people of Israel. In mercy, remember the enemies of thy church and grant unto them repentance unto life. Be thou the protector and defender of thy people in all time of tribulation and danger. And may we, in communion with thy church and in brotherly unity with all our fellow Christians, fight the good fight of faith and in the end receive the salvation of our souls. Bestow thy grace upon all the nations of the earth. Especially do we entreat thee to bless our land and all its inhabitants and all who are in authority. Cause thy glory to dwell among us and let mercy and truth, righteousness and peace everywhere prevail. To this end, we commend to thy care all our schools and pray thee to make them nurseries of useful knowledge and Christian virtues, that they may bring forth the wholesome fruits of life. Graciously defend us from all calamities, by fire and water, from war and pestilence, from scarcity and famine. Protect and prosper everyone in his appropriate calling, and cause all useful arts to flourish among us. Be thou the God and father of the widow and the fatherless children, the helper of the sick and the needy, and the comforter of the forsaken and distressed. Accept, we beseech thee, our bodies and souls, our hearts and minds, our talents and powers together with the offerings we bring before thee, which is our reasonable service. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would continue to look in mercy upon your servant Peggy, that you would grant her strength and health insofar as you are willing, but above all that you would comfort her and grant her patience and keep her in the true faith unto eternal life. Encourage her day by day by your holy gospel. We also pray that you would strengthen and great, grant patience and understanding and the ability to bear up to her loved ones as well, especially her daughter Julie in this difficult time. Grant joy in her service to her mother and peace as she does those things which are pleasing in your sight. We pray also that you would bless Yulia's father, Vyacheslav, that you would continue to prepare him for his exit from this life, and that in your mercy you would receive him into your kingdom. We pray that you bless his wife and children and all of his loved ones, that you would comfort and encourage them by your holy gospel, and that you would keep all of us in the true faith unto eternal life. And as we are strangers and pilgrims on earth, help us by true faith and a godly life to prepare for the world to come, doing the work thou hast given us to do while it is day, before the night cometh when no man can work, and when our last hour shall come. Support us by thy power and receive us into thine everlasting kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you.
It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto the O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God. And now do we praise thee that thou didst send unto us thine only begotten Son, and that in him being found in fashion as a man, thou didst manifest the fullness of thy glory. Therefore with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. took bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. We give thanks to thee, almighty God, that thou hast refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we beseech thee that of thy mercy thou wouldst strengthen us through the same in faith towards thee and in fervent love toward one another through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. The Lord be with you. And with our spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord 